January 9th, 2007. An ordinary Tuesday, I thought, while I went to school, even though I was 100% certain that I'd fell almost every class I participated in. Well, how foolish, because only 8,000 kilometers away, there was a guy called Steve Jobs, you might have heard of him, who would do a keynote that would change the smartphone industry and how we use mobile technology forever. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Hello you and welcome to the first episode of the best history lessons on iPhone OS and iOS you can find on, well, this channel. Today, big surprise, we'll take a look at the first ever iPhone OS that came along with the iPhone first generation or 2G. As you might know, Apple right from the beginning did create the software along the hardware, but for the first iPhone the teams weren't actually told all information about the full project they were working on. So while one team worked on the iPhone itself, <laughs> there was even another team that desperately tried to transform an iPod into a phone by the way, but another team worked on creating an Apple-like software for smartphones. And those two projects weren't even working properly at the time of the keynote, so Steve Jobs and the whole Apple team had to hope that everything they've worked on for so long works without any bugs or problems. So what can we expect? Steve Jobs himself stated that the iPhone will run OS X, which is kinda true but also a huge exaggeration in my opinion, especially when you take a look at the home screen. Well, I see no difference at all. But anyway, it would have been hard to put a whole desktop screen into a phone, so they had to break it down at some point, I think. Huh? But where's the App Store, you might think? Well not really existent at that point. The first versions of iPhone OS 1 didn't even feature the iTunes Store. On iPhone OS 1, you were actually pretty much limited to these 16 apps you can see right here on this screenshot. But hold up! You could actually just touch those little icons with your finger and this action would open up this very app. You might think, well that's not such a big deal to me, I do this every day on my iPhone 16 Pro Max helicopter for 20 terabytes, but it actually was back in the days. A lot of mobile operating systems weren't even built for touch inputs, but those that were capable of those functions were often used with a stylus or you had to push your finger an inch into the screen to force the phone to censor the input. iPhone OS 1 on the iPhone on the other hand was totally created to use it with your finger and thanks to multi-touch even with your fingers. What? And I always find my path back to the keynote of the original iPhone to take a look at the excited people who were blown away by scrolling through a music library with your own finger to be able to zoom in on pictures with two of your own fingers and to be able to use so many new functions on such a small device. Also, the first iPhone was advertised as a 3-in-1 package. A phone, an iPod and an internet communicator. And Safari was a feature that did change the internet usage on those little tiny devices. Now, it was so easy to navigate through your beloved websites, you could even watch little movies on that new gorgeous 3.5 inch screen like, you know, po uh, potato recipe videos and stuff like that. With the new scroll and zoom functions, it was now easier than ever to find the right video or content on the website. Also, iPhone OS in comparison to other mobile operating systems was pretty well organized. Everything on your black background with like a silver metal dock bar just made so much sense. You just hit a button that woke up the phone, slid your sweaty finger, which has been inside a chips can two seconds ago and leaves a big fat slimy stain track over the slide to unlock phone and then you were inside the system. It's very safe to say that the biggest difference to today's iOS is the entertainment factor. Well, you could watch YouTube videos and videos on the internet via the Safari browser, but you didn't have access to games or to a single additional app that could bring joy to your life. I mean, well, you had a calculator, so you could do exciting calculations, call your friends if you, unlike me, had some, or take a look at your important appointments in your calendar if you, unlike me, had those, or, you know, scroll through your music library. In later versions of iPhone OS 1 they fixed a ton of bugs, added the iTunes store and a function that actually allowed you to rearrange the icons on your home screen. How futuristic. <laughs> In the next episode we'll go on and talk about the next big changes to iPhone OS so make sure to subscribe and to hit like if you like this video. Also let me know your opinion on iPhone OS 1 in the comments. See you and goodbye.